Hello. Hey, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time where we can relax and craft together. And we typically work on a project for about an hour every evening, and we work on the project from beginning to end over however many days it takes. And today we're going to be working on the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. We are at the binding stage, so I am trimming off all the extra batting, and we are going to do a self-contained a binding, like a self-binding binding for this. And I had a little bit of practice on a different project today for that self-binding, so I'll show you guys that. Uh, but I'm I'm stoked. We are at the the end of this quilt for sure. It'll take it'll take a few more days. It's going to take a long time to to pin it all together and sew it still. But you know, each each day we're ticking away a little bit more at it. Uh, but what I wanted to show you guys, I have some show and tell tonight. So uh, that Finish It Friday project that we worked on on Friday. Uh, that baby quilt. I finished that up. I worked on it this weekend a little bit and I actually worked on it for a good half of the day today. It took a little bit longer than I thought, but I have that done. I want to show you and it's all all washed. So all quilted and washed. Uh, but here we go. I'm going to show it to you guys. So this is what we worked on on Friday, but here we go. Here's the stars, the star quilt. So a little little baby quilt. So up close, you can see I just um, I did those stars that were couched, and I kind of went I went in the star and then I squiggled around and then I um, so I made these like lines in the star so we got that like crisscrossy star still and then the rest the rest is just just squiggles. So practicing my my free motion quilting, and then the back is this fleece minky. Um, it's actually not minky. This is actually my my fabric that I did with Clothworks. You can kind of see a little bit of the stars on the back, but it's just fun. It's just really, it's really got a nice texture to it, and I'm so excited. It was it was fun to do. Uh, so I quilted that today. And uh, so this is that couching that we did the other day. And this is washed already. I put it through the washer and dryer and it puffed up and it looks all quilty. So I am so happy with it, you guys. Uh, so I can show you guys that a little bit more uh, when we flip. But oh, here I did the self. Ooh, that stayed together. All right. So I did those self uh, contained uh, bindings with it. So this was just the back that I folded over and made the binding out of it and then machine stitched it on. So so that's what we're gonna actually do for the Charming Chevrons quilt as as well. So all right so and then the other thing <laughs> so Sunday I was cleaning my office a little bit and this embroidery hoop from Auburn Hoops uh, they do really fun embroidery hoops and I know I've shown you this hoop before um, but it's been staring at me for ages and ages and I finally just is like I need to do this project so I got to show you guys that too. I made a, a tested a little punch needle and I uh, made this little guy out of the Auburn out of the Auburn hoops here so that that's um, remember the Auburn hoops that's all wood and um, has that little has that white ring on the inside and that leather that to pop it out. I filled it in with um, yarn and uh, did the punch needle. So this is that, this is that bigger punch needle. I this is the first time I'm trying to use the the larger punch needle. We did the small punch needle with embroidery floss. So this punch needle actually fits yarn in. And uh, for this this uh, I used scrap yarn that I had. And uh, this is actually two pieces of yarn I put in this kind of gold chunky yarn, and then I had a gold mohair that I skinny mohair that I put in at the same time so you can kind of see up close it's it's two actually two uh strands of yarn that I was able to to put in here and I could probably even put thicker stuff in there so I have links to uh the punch needle if you want to try the big punch needle this took 
uh, so much less time than the uh, other punch needle we did with embroidery floss because you could cover a big area with the yarn. So that was fun. <laughs> Got that out of my system. <laughs> so I just had to show you guys that. I, I know I've been talking about that for a long time and we tried that punch needle already and oh, I feel so much better that that project or that idea isn't looming in my head anymore. <laughs> So anyway, let's get on to the charming chevrons quilt here, um, and uh, we're going to be working on this self-contained, self-contained binding. So, all right, guys, going to flip you around. Yeah, I mean, Robin, I I was busy today and a tiny bit yesterday. I I, I all of a sudden felt like the need that I got to get this done. The um the blankie, I mean, that I just had to get done because you know. Uh, she's going to have her baby and she's having the um, shower soon, I think next weekend. So <laughs> I need it done. But here here we go. You can see the quilting a whole lot more. I did big swirls. Um, just some things that I learned on this. It is, I mean, the, the fleece. So I'm, I, only have, I only have the quilting weight fabric and the fleece. There's no batting or anything. And the feel of that is really great. And I love how fleece kind of hides all your stitches. So if I do have some wonky stitches in here, uh, they're gonna be totally, totally hidden, which is great. However, it was not that easy to move to quilt like this with, um, with the fleece on the back. It just did not wanna move. So I really, I really had to move it around. Um, so that, that was actually a surprise. That was more difficult than I thought it would. I thought this would be just really easy to shimmy around, but it, it kind of wanted to stick a little bit. Um, so, you know, if you look real close, there's a bunch of spots where I stop and start and have to get going again and, and all that. So little, little jogs here and there, but I am, I'm happy with it overall. And this has been washed, so you can see it's, it's poofed up. Um, oh, it, it's like a, well, Minky, I think, is kind of a brand name, Gina. Um, I'm not positive on that, but I think um, I think they're basically the same thing, right? Uh, so it's like a it's a fleece, and I th I think Minky's just kind of like the brand name for fleece. I think Shannon Fabrics does the Minky, if I remember correctly. This is from Clothworks. This is actually my my fabric. It goes with um, it goes with the uh, Safari or Safari Suite collection. So it has all the same colors from there. That's actually why, that's how come the, the purple matches uh, pretty well because they're kind of from the same same collection. But that's that. So we are gonna do these self, uh, self-contained self bindings here. Uh, I think that miter turned out pretty good. This is after going through the wash too and it's still looking pretty good. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do this quilt just like this. Oh, I wanted to show you, so I'm gonna give them um, baby's gonna get this guy too. It's this weird black bear that I made a while ago, but um, I think it'll fit um, fit her personality. Um, so it says hold me on it. So she's gonna get, uh, baby's gonna get this blankie and, and this bear. <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't know if it's a girl or a boy yet. So uh, just kind of gender neutral things. And this is just kind of like a kooky kooky dark bear and I think I think mom's gonna like that so I'm gonna wrap those up but I wanted to show you guys before before I wrap it all up um, tomorrow oh this is supreme slider worked with the minky back quilt okay Robin I'm gonna have to look at that a little bit more but then here's here's this if you guys wanted to see a little bit closer up so here's uh, I did like the medium size loops and I did, uh, you know, I did a little mohair. That's what these skinny ones are, mohair. And then this yarn, this is the same yarn that's on the hedgehog behind me, the, out, the outlines on it. So there's that. And then the back, I used um, some monk's cloth for this. It frays quite a bit, but you know, now that I'm done, I'm not going to be handling it so much. But that was fun. That was a quick project. This took me probably an hour or so, um, not, not any longer than that. But I had to show you all my little projects. Uh, Lydia, I actually found more fleece. So I thought, remember we had that fabric sale um, for penguin and fish fabric. And I only had like a two yards, I think, of, of each of my four different kinds of that fleece. But then 
then afterwards, actually like months and months afterwards, I discovered that I had a, a closet upstairs that had a bolt of each of it in. So I do actually have a little bit more of the fleece. Um, it's a little more expensive than quilting weight fabric, but if you guys are, if any of you are interested in, in the fleece, uh, just uh, message me on Facebook. Uh, I forget what I, what the pricing is. I'll have to look that up um, per yard. But it is really fun. And there's a few different colors. This is the, the super colorful one, but then I have like a neutral tan and a, a green and a, and a red. But yeah, I found, I found some more like months and months later. <laughs> I was cleaning out a closet in my office and I'm like, what's this? I got all this, all this uh, fleece here yet. So I'm like, oh man. So I do have a little bit more fleece if, um, that I wouldn't mind not having in my, in my uh, closet anymore. <laughs> so I'm just trimming off this batting um, just to kind of get my straight edge here. In theory, you could, you know, use a rotary cutter and cut this, but I'm just, I'm just trying to get it done. I think this is close enough. I, where I do go over, sometimes I, I quilted and I went into the border a little bit. I'm gonna have to like seam rip those areas out. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, typical quilter hiding, hiding stash everywhere. Yeah, I, I literally, it was, I have a, a closet in my office where my, where like my computer is. And there's bins and bins when you open, open the closet. So just bins of like, I don't know, random things I was making are just where I store some of my fat quarters uh, in the bins. And I moved those bins because I need to get behind there for some reason. And then all the fleece was there. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I have, <laughs> I have a bolt of this stuff. Yep. Yeah. And it totally takes up, the fleece takes up so much space. It's so, it's so poofy. Like 10 yards of fleece is the same as like two standard like 15 yard bolts of, of fabric or maybe more even it's just it's just real fluffy so I'm nervous doing what I'm doing right now I don't want to accidentally cut the back the back fabric at all oh hello Mary Alice I'm happy you're here too Nolene running late we are just getting going I did finish my uh if you missed the beginning though, I did finish my Finish It Friday project, the little baby quilt. I'm, I'm super stoked. I, if you guys follow me on Instagram, I did a couple of little Insta stories of it in progress. It definitely took longer than I thought. <laughs> it really took all morning. I had a, I worked all weekend, um, except for that little bit on Sunday when I made the punch needle just cause I needed, I needed a, a break really. Um, so this morning I kind of took a break since I worked all weekend and I finished the quilt. Actually, it wasn't that much of a break. It needed to get done for, like I said, for, for the, for the baby shower, but still wasn't real work, I suppose. All right. We are almost done. We, we cut the, I'm, I'm just cutting one side of this batting off right now. We did the other, the other, um, three on, um, on, gosh, when did we work on this last Wednesday? Probably, huh? No, Wednesday was, wait, was Wednesday the first? Yeah, Wednesday was my husband's birthday. That's not two weeks gone already, is it? No, I don't think so. Yeah, Wednesday was my husband's birthday, so I wasn't here. So Tuesday, it must have been Tuesday the last time we worked on this. Man, crazy. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, I feel like I'm, you know, sometimes when I have a lot going on, I just kind of, like, it was a kind of a stressful week for me last week. There's just, like, a lot going on. And then, uh, um, and then uh, you know, there comes a point where I just need to, like, clear the plate a little bit by, like, cleaning my office or something like that. I find that, like, super helpful. Like, cleaning, cleaning my, my office, like, cleans out my, um, cleans out my brain a little bit. 
Oh, here's the part where I went over. We're going to have to pick that out, but I'm going to cut around it for it right now. And one of those things um, that I just had to finish was that punch needle, that, that hoop. It's in my office and on a shelf, just staring at me, like empty, not done. And I, and I was saving that scalloped hoop because I wanted to do that little line in it because I thought it looked like a, like a scalloped lion's mane. So that idea was sitting for ages and I couldn't not have it complete. It's like I needed it clean, you know what I mean? And, um, so I did that. I felt a lot better. So, okay. So this is a problem, right? Um, we need this right to the edge here. I think for now, I'm going to skip over that and I'm going to start cutting my, my edge. We need this to be, we need this to be one inch. So I'm going to get the ruler out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to like shimmy this down to the ground again. And I'm going to just kind of, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be about an inch. So I'm going to just throw this on and I'm going to rotary cut and then I'm going to move it and then rotary cut some more. I'm going to do that and just let this be for now. But I'm going to have to go in with a seam ripper, I think, and, and trim this out. Um, so I think I'll do that as I rotary cut. So it'll, it'll be a rotary cutting slash seam ripping night tonight because I think we got like a pile of, of these. So we'll, we'll do this side first, the one that we just did. I'm gonna make sure it's flat so I'm not, I'm not uh, accidentally cutting through the quilt, which is like petrifying to me. All right, we're nice and flat here. So doing one inch here will, um, it will be the same as what this is. It'll give us this little kind of like half inch rolled rolled edge here so it'll be it'll be just the same size as as this which is just going to be just right just a little teeny red frame around all of it oh i could use all that batting for a jelly roll mug yeah i'll definitely carol i'll definitely keep keep the batting i just i can't throw that stuff away i i feel like sometime i'll use it you know what i mean even though it's all full of little threads and stuff okay you know what i still got I have pins in here yet. Oh yeah, I was kind of keeping those in, wasn't I? Just to, so this wasn't flopping around so much. But we're all quilted now. I don't think we need, I don't think we need these anymore. These are going away. They're just going to be annoying when I, when I trim. We're attached everywhere. I don't think we need them. Let's get a few more. I'll, I'll cut them off as I go up. Okay, I think that was just, never, never finished that. Okay, so now here, I got the edge here. And I am going to just put my, put one inch in. I'm going to just put that on the edge. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. So if I, you know, I'm going to be cutting and then I'm going to be moving everything. And I'm not going to worry about that. You know, usually when you're dealing with a rotary cutter and ruler, you want everything to be perfect or whatever. But... Um, we're going to be fine if I pick this up and move it. So, okay, using that edge. Actually, you guys, I need to move you a little bit. Otherwise, I won't be able to get through. There, let's go right there. I, exactly, with um, self-binding, I only have to sew once, you know what I mean? It was so fast to do the self binding. I mean, it was a, I had a wonder clip the whole thing. That was a pain in the butt, but still to not have to make, sorry, I made you guys wiggle, not to have to do a whole, um, I'm just trying to move you guys, not to have to do a whole separate binding and put it on, uh, was, it's just nice. So uh, Carol's saying that an inch seems small, but it's not. So this is what we're going to do here. Um, after we're all done cutting, we're going to fold it in once like this. So that's a half at a half inch there. And then we're going to rotate it again. And there we go. That's, that's it. So it's going to be the perfect amount of, of um, binding. One inch, uh, so that's why I wanted to do, that's why I wanted to do this test too, just to just see 
if that one inch binding was gonna work. And, and this is what it's gonna look like. It's gonna look just like this. This is about the same thickness as this too, since we have the two quilting weight fabrics and then that light binding, that's about the same as a quilting weight fabric and this fluffy, uh, fluffy stuff here, fluffy, fluffy fleecies. So yep, yeah, did that test today. One inch is gonna be fab. I know it doesn't seem like a lot though. I mean, we're, we're so used to doing our two and a half inch or two and a quarter inch um, binding that it just feels super odd to have like a teensy, teensy one inch thing. Oh, you love the star quilt, Noeline. Oh, thanks. That was, that was really fun to me to, for me to do. Cause that was like testing out, um, some of that fun quilting stuff that we've been learning like in the wild, even though I just did swirls, uh, it's, it's just, that was, uh, that was still practice for me, like to, to figure out how to get in and out of spaces and all that. Yes, Lydia, try this. I, I almost wonder why bother doing it any other way. I mean, we just happen to have enough fabric on the back to, to do this. I mean, if you don't have an inch of fabric here, you know, you can't really do it. Um, but ugh, it was nice to just use the sewing machine and sew that binding on, uh, sew, do the, some self-contained binding earlier today on that, on the star quilt. All right, a little further up. This is a little different though. Much, much bigger quilt going on here. Ooh, gosh, it looks like a bunch of, I have a bunch of threads to clip. This I didn't get too close, but I think we're going to be fine. It's not going to matter. All right. I can see some of our later, our later uh, rows coming up. So we're getting there. I think maybe three more, three more cuts. And I think we'll have the one done. Yeah, it, it's, that's, it's just so quick. Noeline and and uh, and I can use the sewing machine to stitch it on which is nice and it, I mean it's not it, it's not like if you want like a nice sometimes it's really nice to do a, a different binding because it's like that one extra frame like you know if you use a black binding or something that can really frame your final piece and you don't get that like we won't get that on the back with um, with a self-binding thing. It's just gonna be that red. I gotta move you guys over a little bit more. I keep keep hitting you. Um, get my shoulder into, into there. But, you know, sometimes that's the look that you want for a quilt, like this. I like that it's gonna just, the back is just gonna bleed off into black, or into, into the red. The red is just gonna, is just gonna go on forever. And I think that's kind of fun. We're gonna have a lot of extra fabric for this too. I could use that for something. Okay. Yep, two more cuts. Oh, and then we got that chunk there. I, I suppose we should try and try and pick that out. Ugh. That is that's one thing that you gotta watch out for when you do a self-binding quilt. You gotta really make sure you don't go you don't quilt past past your main center quilt area, um, you know, because otherwise, you know, you're gonna have to pick it out. Like I'm gonna have to there for the the baby quilt. I kind of went way far away from the edge just to make sure that I didn't run into this problem. And I think I maybe went a little for, far away on on some of it, but it turned out just. Fine. Especially once it's washed, it just all kind of goes together. Okay, one little bit done. So you know what? I think I think I gotta address this now. I'm gonna do it as I go, so I don't have to move this quilt around again. So let's get down in here. I got the seam ripper out. Let's seam, let's try and just ugh, tear this out a little bit and um, I need to just be able to get in here. 
all the free motion quilting it looks fabulous as you move on up oh that's awesome thanks noeline yeah i'm i i uh, i think you can definitely see a progression <laughs> which makes sense I, I i was hoping there'd be some sort of progression um from not knowing what i'm doing to knowing what i'm doing a little bit more having a little bit more practice Ugh, this is gonna be a pain, but again, gotta, gotta get done. Each little step gets us a little farther, I suppose. Might be easier from the back, that's true. The, the problem is I don't know how to, far to go in on the back. Here I have this, this line to see. So maybe once I get, get going, I'll be able to pop it out. And it's different, there we go, it's different than, uh, straight seam where you can just kind of go up on the edge a little bit. And I got to make sure that I don't accidentally cut a hole in here or anything. Do you recall how much red fabric, oh, how much did I use for the half square triangles front and back? Oh, I'm not sure, Carol, but uh, it's on the pattern. It's uh, by uh, Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. And I do have a link to the pattern and if you go to that link, she has a photo of the back of the pattern, and that has all the fabric measurements. It has everything. It, it will say right there how much fabric you need, um, you know, if you're doing a twin or a king or a lap quilt or a baby quilt. It gives you all those, all those bits there, so I, I would recommend going to there. Yeah, I don't want to accidentally cut the back of my red out, so I'm trying to be a little bit careful here. I think last time I used the rotary cutter, I cut a big hole in the fabric. So I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm doing it this, where you're just cutting little bits along the way. That's not really how you're supposed to use a rotary cutter, or not a rotary cutter, a seam ripper. I think I've said rotary cutter, cutter like four times for this, but the seam ripper, um, typically you, you just make a nick to get it started, but then you can open up the seam. Oh, well, and then run run with the ball side down, just run up your seam and it works super fast. It's not any of this little picking stuff that I'm doing now. Um, but I cut through my fabric last time I did that. So I'm being a little, little pickier. And these are weird curves and free motion quilting and stuff too. So a little different than a normal, normal seam ripping project. I think this is probably the most detailed seam ripping <laughs> uh, area. I think um, the other places where I went over the edge a little bit, I don't think they're as, um, I don't think there's as much stuff. Um, I'm picking from this side, Gretchen, just because I think if I pick from the other side, I don't know, I don't know how far in to go really. Well, like an inch, but still here I can get right, right to where I need it. I don't feel like I'm going to cut through the fabric here either, so. I think this is working fine. Let's get this last little bit here. Oh, I did that already. Maybe we can pop it out now. Ooh, a little in there. Okay, that is enough for me to be able to cut it. So that's, that's um, what I'm going to do now, and then we'll rotate around get the cover on there scissors oh here you are oh gosh i'm still afraid i'm gonna cut through my back fabric actually you can you can fold Oh, there we go. You can fold the back fabric back, but I don't know. That feels like you could catch it even more. Just gonna go slow. There we do. That, that'll that'll work enough. Oh, I don't know if you guys could see. I just trimmed trimmed that away. Those little these little guys aren't gonna matter. Okay, let's see if there's any, yeah, we'll just let that all be. When this is done, I'm going to have to 
go over the whole thing and pick at it. Oh man, so see here we're gonna go around and around and then we're gonna sew it down. So I am gonna have like all these little frayed edges here. So I'll have to take care of those. I'll probably have to do that for every row, kind of take care of how, how these finish, you know, cause I don't want like this big toe catcher here and stuff. So I am gonna have to go back and address all these. So maybe it would, maybe self binding wasn't the perfect way to go, but again, I, I think it's gonna be fine and I'm gonna like it. So let's turn. Margaret, thanks so much. I I I love this. I mean, this was this is a big deal for me to attempt to free motion quilt. Like I, I mean, I like I said, I've been um, kind of. This has been years uh, in the making. Like years of being too scared to to do free motion quilting. Like years and years and years. So I'm I'm really happy this project came along. Uh, Krista's charming chevron project. I, I just thought it'd be a perfect, uh, perfect um, way to kind of get introduced to the free motion quilting, especially because you know, especially I'm hiding the free motion quilting a little bit by going on this patterned area. Um, so I don't know. That took some fear out of it too, <laughs> a little bit, I think. All right, let's cut this guy to one inch. I gotta be quiet when I cut. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna be fine however it ends up. But I don't want it like less than an inch. I wanna make sure to get that inch. Ugh, I need a bigger table. Oh, let's take these pins out as we go to. I'm going to try and straighten the quilt out a little bit because I don't want to accidentally cut through um, cut through like some of this bulk. There, I think that'll do. Come on, quilt. Whew, this is a... Uh... Working with this big quilt is definitely different than working with the baby quilt this morning. <laughs> that was pretty slick working on such a small, such a small uh, project. You could just rotate it and shimmy it around everywhere. That was nice. It got me thinking that baby quilts are the perfect practice quilts. Like if you, ooh, how far does my, okay, it goes up to there. Um, if you have a new technique that you want to try or you just want to make like six blocks or four blocks or, or something, a baby quilt is like perfect. It's barely a commitment, um, you know, so it'll go kind of quick. And yeah, you can test a new free motion quilting uh, motif or you can, um, yeah, play with a new block that looks pretty or, you know, a fancy block that you know you don't want to do bajillion things, like you don't want to do a whole giant queen size quilt. Man, baby quilts are the, the way to go, I'm thinking. <laughs> I see more baby quilts in my future. Getting to be a time to change my rotary cutter blade too, I think. Actually, it's not nicking or anything, so we'll just leave it until it starts, starts little nicks. Yeah, they're small and not overwhelming. Exactly, Noeline. Nice little deals. Oh, that's good. Forgot about all these little pins. I can only handle one step, one thing at a time. I can't remember pin and then cut and then pull and blah, blah. One thing at a time. Okay, this is the last cut on this guy and then I already can see shenanigans happening there. So maybe I'll do that before I cut.
All right, let's rotate. Get the bulk hanging over the edge again. Oh, you bought the Charming Chevron's quilt. Just found it. And to make a queen size, it requires um, five yards. Oh, another nine yards for the backing. So, yeah, I am pretty sure I did not use all that. Oh, you know what? It it probably says that many... I mean, I, I'm not doing a queen. I'm doing a twin. Um, but it's probably because you have to sew... The backing together. I, I disregarded the backing. I, you know what? I had a lot of this red laying around, so I was kind of in a different boat than just picking out all my fabric beforehand. Uh, Carol, I um, I'm, let's seam rip this. Um, I I'm just using stuff that I had around, and I have a whole bolt of this red, so I wasn't thinking so much about that. And then my my back, I made out of the scraps from the front, and then. Uh, just use a little bit more of the red. So yeah, I, I guess I didn't pay too close attention to how much fabric fabric I needed, and I used mostly fat quarters for the front. But yeah, that that seems like an awful lot. But uh, my guess is because you probably have to Frankenstein two pieces together for the back, so you need that like length times two. for the for the back and there is quite a bit of that color on the front too but you could do, do do a different color on the back and yours is a queen Gretchen and and you didn't use nine yards seems like too much that it, it seems like an awful lot yeah if you don't want to do that I would maybe just I'm sure there's little calculators if you just like Google like quilt back calculator, I bet you something will pop up or some blog post of how to calculate how much you need. It also depends what direction you do the fabric in. Come on, little dude. Got like one more little seam here. Oh, it just doesn't. Oh, I, you know why? Because it's free motion quilting and I probably did a ton of itty bitty stitches here on accident. Like normally this would just kind of come apart, but yeah, look at all those baby stitches. <laughs> Got a little bit here yet. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean up the back of this somehow, but we'll figure it out. If not, they'll just hang out there, who cares? All my little stray edge. Okay, there we go. Yeah, see all this is going to be exposed, so that's got to get addressed. I'm just going to cut it in half for now. Okay. Ready to trim that. Oh yeah, if you get a broadcloth or something even that's 56 inches wide, some like upholstery fabric and stuff is that wide. Um, yeah, and there's some fabrics meant for backing quilts that are really, really, really wide. I think I got one more of these on this side somewhere, but we'll see as we cut. Oh, some fray check, Fr some fray, um, wait, fray, ch fray check, is that what it's called? on the cut threads. That's a good idea, Sharon. I, I'm i not sure if I have any of that, but I have a lot of random, uh, random like, notions and contraptions and glues and stuff around. Maybe if I dig, I'll find some, some fray, um, fray stuff. Oh, let's get some of these. Oh, this guy's stuck. There we go. Alrighty. What is fray check? Is it just, I mean, I know 
I've heard of it, but I mean, like, what is it? Like, what compound is it? Like, is it super glue? Like, how does it stay? If you like wash the quilt, does it go away? Ooh, this was uncovered. Don't like that. Ugh. There's um threads all over this thing that I gotta take care of. So after I'm done, um, after I'm done with this quilt or before I wash it, I'll have to go around and cut all the little little bits of thread and then, then that's when I'll deal with the um, with the with the edges. Great app, the quilters little helper app. Oh Robert Kaufman it, it figures out yardage for you. Ooh, that's a good good suggestion. Ugh, okay. Shimmy up this side. All right, that looks okay about there. Oh, it smells like clear nail polish. It's just clear liquid in a little squeeze bottle. Oh, and it doesn't wash out. Ooh, yes, I will, um, I'm gonna look into that because yeah, we're gonna have some weird exposed edges that I wasn't really thinking about. Exposed little, uh... if I was thinking far enough ahead, I would have made sure that I didn't go outside the quilt and then I wouldn't have any of those cutoffs. I would just have perfect little end ends on all these. So, you know, now I know that for next time. If I'm planning on doing that self, self-contained binding to just really make sure that my, I end, I end where I need to end. You know, if I need to draw a line or something, but I need, you know, that's important. I suppose I kind of did learn my lesson. That's why I did the, um, the that baby quilt I made sure I'd stayed really far away from the edge maybe a little too far but I think drawing on my do not pass zone uh, line might be beneficial next time because I'm thinking there will be a next time it'll be um it's just so nice to do this self-contained binding that I think I'll for sure do it again. And and I'm free motion quilting now, so I'll be doing that again too, I'm sure. All right, this must be close to the end of this row. Yep, there we are. Two more cuts or so, I think. Oh, it's similar to, uh, fray check is similar to super glue, but it's for fabric. Oh, it kind of melts the ends together. Oh, weird. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard of it, I just haven't used it and I don't, I didn't know how it actually mechanically works. Okay, here we are. Uh, one more cut, I think after this one. This will get us to the end though. Okay. One more little bit. I kind of veered at the end, so I'm gonna them a little lower. There we go. All right. Jeez, yeah, there's so much. I could make a binding out of what's left over here from the back. Maybe I should just make a binding and have it sitting around. Never know when you need that extra binding. All right, this is our last our last bit. And ooh, it looks like um, I have no more areas to pick to seam rip. So that's good news. I want to show you guys tonight how to do the mitered corners. There's, I've seen it done a, a few different ways and the way that I'm going to do it, maybe it's not the best way because it's maybe not, it doesn't dis, uh, disperse the fabric evenly, but it was so easy um, that that's good enough for me. <laughs> so I'll show you how, how I do the, um, the mitered corners here. In a moment, we're almost done cutting this. This is the last, last edge. Yeah, and then it'll be a matter of just, we'll, we're gonna wonder clip the heck out of this thing. So I'm gonna, 
I'm going to go around the edges with wonder clips, probably until I run out of wonder clips. <laughs> and then I might move on to pins, but I might just wonder clip as I go after. But that might be really annoying to wonder clip as I go because it'll be on the machine. I'm not going to want to take it off of the machine. Oh, Carol, that's a good idea to test, test the fray check on a backing piece. Yeah, especially since I have like super saturated fabrics here. I don't want it to like leach it or something. Oh, let's get these guys. We're back to row one again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is not a perfectly square straight line. So we're just gonna, it's just gonna be what it's gonna be. And that's perfectly fine. It's gonna be just right, this binding. All right. Two more cuts and I think we'll be done. Oh, let's get this guy. Oh, this is the last one. Unless there's a stray hanging out here, which there might be. It's always some random stray pin. Right about right there. <laughs> the meander. I here, yeah, here you can see the meander. I was thinking about the meander today while I was doing the loops. So for the for the for the um, baby quilt, I did like these. I did loops. I think that's a million times easier than the meander because the meander, this I, like it's so intense for me, my brain, to make sure that I have enough room to get out of a spot. But with, with the swirl, I can just cross over and get to a different place. So I don't know. I For me, that meander wasn't as beginner uh, as as the swirl. I like, I like that swirl a lot more. I think it's cuter too, actually. I think the swirl's pretty cute. All right, there we go. Maybe I'm just mad at meandering because I don't have it down yet. That could be too. All right, uh, ruler, you can go there. Okay, you guys, we are done, um, done trimming this. Oh man, it's so heavy. So I'm gonna show you guys quick how to do this corner and then we'll leave the rest for, uh, for tomorrow. So get my wonder clips out. I got a couple, I have these cute containers from Ikea so I can stick them on like a magnet, but um, I have, I have just um, normal, I have a, well, this is a mix of the normal wonder clips that look like this. And then I have a whole, a whole pile of mini wonder clips as well that are just a little skinnier. We're going to use all of these. I used, I used a full one and then a little bit of another one for, for that baby quilt. Oh, fray check is good to secure knots like those. Oh, that are tied from the serger. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to look into that for sure. And it's only those couple places, the couple places that I had to cut it away, cut away the banding because I went over the edge. Those are the ones um, that I'm gonna have to do that for. Okay, so this is how I did the uh, um, the binding for that baby quilt. Here, I'll get that out again. Oop. There, this is this is. Um, I'm going to show you what I did to get these these mitered corners here. And this has gone through the wash already, and it was pretty loose. So, um, but um, it it looks it's holding together still. It's like one little fold on that side, and here's the other side. It's a nice little point. So that's um, what we're gonna do here. Okay. So I'm gonna just start, let's, 
For some reason it worked better for me when I had the wonder clips to my to my left last time. Let's put them up here. Okay, so I'm gonna just start, I'm not gonna start right at the corner, I'm gonna start in a little bit. So I'm just folding the edge of the binding to the edge, edge of the quilt, and then I'm folding it up one more time. I'm gonna just hold it there, throw in a clip. There we go. And now I'm gonna go just keep moving along the edge. And I, I put the wonder clips, there we go, this is how I was doing it. I put the wonder clips pretty close together because it's gonna wanna unroll. Uh, some people press this first, so some people press to the middle and then fold. That would probably be a whole lot easier, <laughs> but this is faster. So here's, here's the corner here. Again, this is just one way to do it. This is the way that I did it for that baby quilt and I think that worked perfectly fine. Um, I'm gonna continue doing it this way. There's a way where you can like fold, fold in and then fold both sides. You know, you can fold this side and then the other side, but this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna fold all the way to the edge and kind of finger press it. Fold it over my edge there. I'm gonna throw a clip right there. Okay. So I just I just pretended that this just kept going. I folded it and I folded it again. That's it, right? All right, I'm gonna rotate. So this is gonna be my new bottom. I'll shimmy over here though. Ah, I'm just going on the floor. I think we're good. <laughs> All right, never mind. I gotta pull the bulk back up. Ugh. Okay, here we are. They wanted to all go on the floor here. So here's my edge again, just kind of rolled, continuing, continuing here. I'm gonna now, like here's the point, that's gonna be my pivot point and I'm gonna fold this entire edge up so it's at 45 degree angle and going right, um, making that triangle so it's right on the edge of the next, the next row. See, so did you see that? So this one's, this is that double fold, fold and fold. And now I'm gonna go that 45 degree angle up like that. So I'm gonna just hold that there. And now we're gonna just do the same thing. I'm gonna fold to the edge And it should, that fold, it should kind of be a continuation of this. So like if you continue this line to here, that's where the fold point will end up being. So you'll get something that kind of looks like this. I'm gonna get a wonder clip ready. And now I'm gonna fold the whole thing over again. There, so I'm folding this edge at the same time. And now, um, if you do that, those angles really nice so it lines up, then you know how we had this, this second fold, the fold was right continuation of the line of this. If you do that, then when you fold it up, that corner point should match up where this last row ended. So I'm just gonna throw a clip on it there. And that's, I'm gonna put that all the way up there, there to the top. So that's that's my mitered corner. That's gonna um, hold in place, hold in place there. And then when we sew, we're gonna just sew to that corner and then rotate and then keep sewing. Um, there is more bulk on this side because that's where you know we folded it over a couple times. It is gonna be bulkier on one side than the other. Uh, that's why, I mean, there's other ways to do this where it's not um, so bulky, but this is so easy that I just am keeping on doing it this way. <laughs> you know, but yeah, so here, that's a perfect, perfect little mitered corner. Ooh, and look, it's it's a continuation of our chevron too, just going zoop, straight up. 
So, all right, um, I think I'll just continue this row for a little bit. Ooh, and this is where um, I'm going to have to remember I want to get a, one of my penguin and fish labels to, to throw that in here as well. So that's, I'm going to have to start thinking about that. I'll show you kind of what I mean. I have these little labels, um, like for this guy. Let's see. Oh, there it is. So um, when I folded over the edge, I stuck one of these guys in here. So I got to remember to stick one of those in here uh, when I get to the, the bottom there. You're making placemats now in napkins. Oh, yeah. Um, this would, you could do this exact same uh, miter on, on something like that too, for sure. Again, it is bulkier on one side. There are other ways to do it, and, and you can you know Google some of those ways. But it's just so easy to just continue it to the end and, and keep going. Gosh, I'm very not coordinated. So I, I, I am, I mean, these are pretty close together, but if I go too far away, then it starts to want to unroll and, and that's, um, I don't know, I don't want it to unroll on me because I'm not pressing it or anything. So that means I just need to use more Wonder Clips which also means I'm probably gonna run out of them. <laughs> but oh well, we're gonna do our best. Just kind of rolling around the edge here. Left-handed wonder clips, can't do it. Oh, Paula, so I, I my labels, they're woven. Um, I just, I've had them for probably a decade now. I ordered a bunch and I'm not through them yet. Here's, here's the, the labels, but yeah, they're, they're woven and it has uh, my website on the back, uh, little, little logo there. You can see, um, all the woven stuff in there. Uh, so, oh gosh, you can do a search online for woven labels. There's tons of places that do them way more places that do them, um, now compared to when I got these made. But yeah, um, I like just putting them in to the, to all the quilts I make, all the things I, I make. I, it just magically makes things look more finished. <laughs> it kinda, it's kind of crazy. It just like, if you want something to look more done and more like, I don't know, almost more professional, throw a label on there. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of magic. But yeah, you can print your own, you can just like, sometimes you can print or do like an iron on, or you can, sometimes you can even print fabric to your printer and then you can just make a little, a little label, a little tag. This one, Marianne, this one is, this quilt is going on the couch. This is going to be a, my, a perfect couch quilt, uh, which basically means it's gonna be a long enough quilt that my husband can tuck his feet in, or he can lay completely uh, flat on the couch and be covered. <laughs> Instead of all these little lap quilts that I have everywhere um, that don't cover his toes. So this one will cover his toes. This is gonna be our, our mega, um, mega couch quilt. All right. Ooh, I think we'll probably, oh, this will be my last one. I'll put one more guy on here and then I'll let this be for tomorrow. So tomorrow, hopefully we can make it around this whole way. Uh, maybe we'll start sewing too. I'm not, not sure if we'll get that far, but we are getting it done. So on the back, so we're gonna just sew like real close to the edge here. And on the back, you know, it just looks like this, Our our, sewing our um we'll have a, a seam running down here like we'll have a sewing seam but i think that'll kind of frame it a little nice and there we go and again here's that here's that uh corner uh, and that just worked out super duper well and it held up and like i said i did i did that earlier today and it and it held up in the wash just fine that corner so i'm, I'm pretty happy with it but all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it an evening tonight. 
Making progress though, it's starting to look finished. Hello! I am excited. We are getting so close to being done with this guy. So uh, we'll work on this uh, for sure tomorrow and Wednesday still. And then uh, um, Thursday is a new block for the Splendid Sampler 2. And then we'll work on it Friday. Next week, I have to check my calendar again, but next week I am going to be out for most of the week. So I will, I'll give you guys uh, more notice on that soon. It's my husband's and my anniversary and we're going on a, our 15 year anniversary. So we're gonna be going on a little vacation. So um, I'll have more info on that when I'll be on uh, next week. Um, I'll keep you updated for that. Oh yes, I will definitely put a ton of color catchers in the wash and I'll probably have to wash it more than once with color catchers because yeah, this red is gonna bleed like crazy, I think. And I have a lot of fabrics in this quilt that'll probably bleed all over too. <laughs> so we'll make sure to do that. But awesome, thank you guys so much for coming me coming um, to see me here uh, for the start of another week. And uh, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies if you wanted to check out how to do that mitered corner again and just probably zoom all the way to the end. And uh, I will be here tomorrow. So have a great evening, everyone. See you then. Good night.